Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about randomized complete block designs. In a previous video, and there'll be a link up here, we talked about a completely randomized design. And so this video introduces the idea of blocking. As usual, down below, there's a PDF version of these slides. All right, so in our previous video, we discussed an example experiment where somebody was studying the strength of joints using different strength of joints in wood using different kinds of wood glue. And so in that experiment, we had two different kinds of glue. We had Gorilla and Typhon, and we had eight pieces of wood lying around, and the individual went cut those eight pieces and then randomly assigned which glue was on each uh, piece of wood and then did an experiment. And that was a completely randomized uh, design. All right, so now what we're gonna think about is imagine that that set of eight pieces of wood was actually two different types. Suppose that we had four that were maple and four that were spruce. Now, if you still went and just numbered those individual pieces one to eight and randomly assigned the glue to those eight, it's possible that you would have gotten all four Gorilla Glue to be maple and all four Typhon glue to be spruce or vice versa, or maybe even got three and one, but something that's gonna make it harder now to analyze these data. And so what you want to do in this kind of situation where you have something that you cannot randomize, notice that I can't take this piece of wood and randomly decide whether it's gonna be maple or spruce, it just is what it is, that I'm gonna use something called blocking. And so what blocking basically means is that you're going to take uh, each of these types of wood and you're going to do a randomized design within each of those types of wood. And therefore wood is going to become your blocking factor. So as an example, this is how the randomization might have played out. So wood one to four here was spruce and woods five to eight were maple. And it, now you're going to do a randomized design within each block, maybe a completely randomized design which in, within each block. Um, as before, there's multiple ways you could do this. One simple way would be to say that take out a four-sided die and for the spruce type, whichever the first two you, unique rolls you have, that's gonna be gorilla. Suppose you did that and you got what, numbers one and three, and then you're gonna do the same thing for wood pieces five to eight. Uh, instead of grabbing an eight-sided die, you could just grab that four-sided die and add four to it. And suppose when you did it, your rolls were two and four. If you add four, you get numbers six and eight, and those two get the gorilla-type glue. Okay, so that's a, right here, a randomized complete block design, often referred to as an RCBD. Okay, and so just as a reminder, the idea here is you're taking the type of wood and using it as a blocking factor so that you can ensure that you have the same number of observations of the treatment uh, in each of those blocks, okay? Doesn't have to be exactly the same number, but you want to make sure that it's represented in both of the types of blocks, in this case, the both types of wood. Uh, all right, so now we have this notion that we talked about, uh, that we've used this idea of complete, and it, if all treatment combinations exist, then we call the design complete. And if there are some treatment levels that are missing, then we call it incomplete. So in this case, we have every combination of spruce and gorilla, sorry, <laughs> every combination of wood type and glue is represented in this experiment. And so it would be a complete experiment. If one of those was missing, it would now become an incomplete experiment or incomplete design. All right, so this is how we looked at the data before, but now I've just indicated with that same data the different types of wood, both by color and symbol. Um, this is probably not the best way to compare these two if you're really interested in the effect of glue, right? The type of wood is just sort of a nuisance factor that you're blocking and controlling for. So we might wanna switch around the way that we are plotting this and instead it put the type of wood on the x-axis and have the glue types as the symbols and color. Now you can clearly see by looking vertically that it seems like type bond is better for spruce and it's also better for maple. All right, now we wanna go forward and we want to make a model for these data. In the last video, we used a shortened version of this model where we didn't have the wood type. 
So now we are introducing this type of wood. So we have now three variables. We have a response variable PW, that's the pounds needed to break the piece of wood W. We have TW, which is an indicator that the glue was tight bond. And we have MW, which is an indicator that the wood was maple. And if we have a main effects model, then we have this model right here, where we have the weight needed, are independent, normally distributed, there's a mean that depends on both whether the glue is type on and whether the wood is maple. Uh, and we have a common variance sigma squared. And now the primary parameter of interest is likely to be the coefficient for type bond here, beta one, because we're interested in here what the difference is in between the two pieces, sorry, the two types of glue. All right, so we can perform the analysis. I'm not gonna go into as much depth as I did on the last video about the analysis here, but that coefficient for wood, uh, sorry, that coefficient for glue, the number 52, I think it is there, that that number is probably the most important number from the analysis. You would want to report that number with some uncertainty. Maybe you also want to report means in terms of the uh, typical break weight or mean break weight for the different combinations of wood and glue. All right, this design that we just talked about is called a replicated design because you have more than one uh, observation of every treatment combination. You can see in this table right here, we have two of, of spruce and gorilla, two of spruce and type bond, and two of the other two as well. Okay, so it's a replicated design. And when you have a replicated design, you can now consider uh, including an interaction in the model. And so if we take the same notation we had before, but when now we consider an interaction model, we add a new term. We add this beta three T times M. That's our interaction term. And now our comparisons get a little bit more complicated. Um, but first we want to determine whether it's uh, necessary to include that interaction. And so there's a couple of ways that we can assess the interaction with these data. So the first way is to look at just the coefficient for that interaction term, that beta three. Uh, we can see here in this table, it's that last line where it says glue type bond colon wood type maple. That's the uh, line for the interaction term. Uh, we can see that the p-value there is pretty large. Therefore, there's no indication that we should include that term in the model. This works just fine when the interaction is really only a product of two terms and doesn't have additional terms in the interaction. We will have additional terms in the interaction if we have more levels of either wood or glue. Uh, and so to assess whether the interaction is needed there, we will, instead of using a t-test like analysis, we will use an f-test uh, or an ANOVA table. Um, so here in this ANOVA table, we are again looking at that last line. When there's only a single term that's added to the model, then the analysis will be exactly the same between the t-test and the f-test. The difference will come when there's more than two levels of either of the explanatory variables. Okay, so that was fine for the data as presented, but let's imagine that the data we actually had was a little bit different. So imagine that these were the data that you actually obtained. And now what we can see is that uh, on the spruce type, type bond is much better in terms of higher weight than gorilla, but on maple, it's the opposite. On maple, we had Gorilla being more effective or higher weight than type bond. Now, this is the kind of situation where an interaction is going to be important, if these are the type of data that you see. If we have a consistent difference between Gorilla and type bond, uh, and in the same direction between the two different wood types or the different blocks, then no interaction is necessary. But in this case, we have type bond is better than uh, Gorilla for spruce. We have the opposite for maple and therefore interaction is likely going to be important if these are the data. Uh, here's an example of analyzing those data as presented, and sure enough, we see that that interaction term is now significant, suggesting that we do include it in the model. Okay, let's suppose that our study was quite a bit different. So let's suppose instead of just two glue choices, we had five glue choices, and instead of just two wood types, we had four wood types, and for each of those four wood types, we had five pieces of wood to start with, okay? If you just work it out, you'll notice pretty quickly that we can only have one, for each wood type, 
we only can do one replicate of the glue, right? Because we have five different types of glue and we have five different pieces of wood for each wood type. We can only have every combination in the model once, okay? Or in the design of the experiment once. Uh, this would be called an unreplicated RCBD. So we can still set up the same design, but now instead of having two uh, replicates of each treatment combination, we're only going to have one. All right, so this is what the data might have looked like. You can see now that there are five different symbols representing uh, the different glue types, both the symbols and the colors. Uh, you can see on the x-axis, we have four different types of wood. Um, and now, uh, you'll see in a second, but we have no ability to assess an interaction. And so we can do a main effects model, so we just have glue and wood type in the model. Uh, we can take a look at what the results are for that model. But if we try to include the interaction, then we'll see some sort of weird results. And so primarily what I want to get across here is if this happens to you, right, you'll know why. And so the first thing we see in this ANOVA table, number one, is we get a warning. It says uh, an essentially perfect fit. And you also see in this ANOVA table that the residuals line has zero degrees of freedom. So zero degrees of freedom, remember that that degrees of freedom is N minus the number of parameters, number of betas in the model. Okay, those betas determine the mean. And so apparently we have just as many betas as we have observations. And that leads to what it's calling a perfect fit up here. And so we have no observations left to estimate uh, the variance to estimate the sigma squared. Okay, so that's one way that you might recognize that the design is unreplicated if you didn't notice before. Uh, if you try to do the summary table, you see essentially a whole bunch of garbage, right? All those NAs just mean that it's not available and that it cannot be, uh, the value cannot be found. And that's again due to this perfect fit. And so the bottom line here is if you have an unreplicated design that has two or more factors, uh, you'll never be able to estimate that highest order interaction in the model. So just something to be aware of. And if that interaction is of importance to you, perhaps it's part of a scientific question, then you want to make sure to have a replicated experiment. All right, so over the last two videos, we talked about two different designs. We talked about a completely randomized design, or CRD, and we talked about a randomized complete block design, RCBD. Now, there's many other types of designs out there. This is just sort of an intro to get you into thinking about how the, the experiment that you can run are designed. We also talked about some features of uh, these designs or some ways that these could deviate from those designs. We talked about having an unbalanced experiment where we have a different number of replicates, an incomplete design where some treatment combinations are missing, and an unreplicated design where we only have one uh, of every treatment combination that's in the experiment. In our next video, we'll move on to talking about uh, two-way ANOVA models. Hope to catch you there.